Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. Um, so, last, sh last show I'm, I'm recording for tonight. Um, I'm really impressed with my setup. The, um, the light on the phone, not on the phone, but the light above the phone, going strong for almost two hours now. Um, the laptop is 61%, so at least a couple hours. You know, everything, everything's going well, so happy about that because this is the mobile setup. And I just was a bit lazy. I didn't do the whole shebang with all the extra lights and the green screen. All right. Um, so uh, more wine, more free wine uh, that I got from Creative Palette. So really appreciate the fact that they send me a, they send me a lot of wine every year. Um, I don't take all the samples that they send because I, I get behind on stuff and, and all that. Um, and I also don't always have enough room to, to store it now. But... Um, Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna hop into this real quick. Uh, so we've got three wines from Domaine Jean Bousquet, 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 I guess Bousquet. Um, but these are all uh, Argentine wines. All right. So first wine, boom. This is the. Oh, well, you know, I don't. I didn't put in my notes. This is the 2017 uh, Domaine Bousquet Chardonnay. As you can see. Uh, it's been in my cellar and uh, instead of putting it like this so that it scrapes the glass, I've been scraping the, the label. I'm sorry about that. Because, um, I, I, you know, it's just on a shelf that's not quite big enough because the shelf that is big enough has too many bottles like this on it. So anyway, another cap. So I've got my Corvin cap going here. So, um, so a 1990 vacation in Argentina was all it took uh, for third generation winemaker Jean Bousquet, oh, right there, it says Bousquet. Uh, it was love at first sight, the object of the Frenchman's desire, uh, the Gualtaleri Valley, a scenic remote in arid terrain high in the Tupungato district of the Uco Valley uh, in Argentina's Mendoza region, close to the border with Chile. Here where the condors fly, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he's described his dream terroir with altitudes ranging up to 5,249 feet. Couldn't quite get that extra foot, huh? Um, it occupies the highest extremes of Mendoza's viticultural limits. Uh, fast forward to the present in wine. Uh, Cosnetti recognized it as a as the source of some of Mendoza's finest wines. Um, the same could not be said when Jean Bousquet first set eyes on this cool climate locale. It was virgin territory, semi-desert. Uh, nothing planted, no water above ground, no electricity, and a single dirt track by way of access. And the locals dismissed the area as too cold to grow grapes. Um, so um, he's from France, and uh, he returned to France uh, in between visits to Argentina, set about uh, divesting himself bit by bit of virtually everything he owned, including the family winery and vineyards in Penetier near Cas Carcass Carcassonne, in Southwest France. His uh, uh, real estate broker was like, you're, you're an idiot. Um, when he signed a contract in 97 to buy a thousand acres. Um, and his uh, daughter um, said, are you buying a beach, all sand, no sea? Um, and uh, he said, well, the locals, they just don't get it. That was his response. Anyway, so he's effectively proved them wrong. Um, he still has 173 acres of the 988 he purchased. Um, he released his first vintage in 2005. Um, let's see. Domaine Bousquet is housed in a striking modern winery complete with a hospitality area and restaurant, and the property accounts for 667 acres planted under vine. Um, his daughter uh, and her husband um, now work with him, 
And yeah, uh, $18 by the way, uh, for actually all these wines. So let's check it out. So you cannot mistake this for Chardonnay. Besides the golden color, that helps. Um, I mean, it's got that apple and let's see, we're gonna try to get, so that's Chardonnay right there. Get the fact sheet for this real quick. Um, it's got that golden apple, touch of um, touch of popcorn to it. Not quite burnt, but a touch of popcorn, touch of butter. Um, green apple also, besides the golden apple. A little vanilla. A touch of baking spice, so definitely some wood in here. Um, let's see. Um, they own the vineyards. Um, it said that by the foothills of the Andes at 4,000 feet, high altitude grants fresh nights that contribute to preserve fresh fruit flavors and acidity in the grapes. Um, harvested by hand during the first and second week of March, 50% of the wine began fermentation in tanks for seven days and then continued the process in French oak where it aged for six months. And this says the other 50% is fermented with selected yeast at temperatures between blah, blah, blah for 15 days. So I guess they stay in the tanks. <clears throat> so yeah. So while the wine is dry, it feels like there's a touch of sweetness to it. Um, like you get that, that, that the, the, the sweet apple, you know, the sweetness from the apple, sugar from the apple. Again, I would, sell, I would call it a golden apple or, you know, a yellow, a yellow apple, golden apple, a um, little bit of green apple, not a lot of pear, um, a touch of orange to it, orange candy. Um, yeah, almost a. Uh, uh, yeah, a little orange candy to it, like almost like an orange Jolly Rancher, if those exist. I don't know, do they? Those, those orange, you know, those little like fake orange candies with like the sugar on it, very much like that, like a, you know, processed, like, you know, you know candy. The popcorn isn't as much, the vanilla isn't as much, but it's in there. Um... You know, there's there's a there's a, like a sweetness to it. And I'm gonna look up the residual sugar. I thought they put it in here on the on the on the fact sheet here. It's only 1.8 grams per liter, so it's really not sweet. But the fruit quality is what gives it that sweetness, right? It's pleasant, you know. $18 Chardonnay. You know, I I, I think it kind of punches above its weight uh, for $18. <clears throat> which, you know, typically Argentine wine and Chilean wine do that. They tend to drink higher than its price. So good value. If you like this style of Chardonnay, which I like sometimes, I don't like sometimes, you know, it kind of depends on my mood and where I'm at. Um, but it's very flavorful, very tasty. It's very varietally correct. Um, and it tastes like wines that are more expensive than, than this. And I wouldn't, I mean, I don't know what the style of Argentine Chardonnay is supposed to be, but I wouldn't, but I would totally think this is from California. All right. Next wine, wine number two. This is the 2017 Domaine Bousquet Malbec, <clears throat> uh, also $18. And uh, this is actually a uh, blend of 85% Malbec, 5% Cabernet Sauvignon, 5% Merlot, and 5% Syrah. So we threw in a non-Bordeaux grape, just for funsies. Um, these are harvested between the third and fourth week of April. Uh, fermented with selected yeast uh, for 10 days and 14 days of additional maceration, which is just the skin contact. 100% uh, Mallow, because it's almost a red wine goes through Mallow. Uh, an age for 10 months in French oak. All right. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay, so the the Aolo from last week and this, no comparison. <clears throat> I mean, this is an eighteen dollar bottle of wine versus a seventy nine dollar bottle of wine. So this has those typical um, has those typical aromas of a wine. I don't know how mass produced this is, but it kind of has some of those aromas of you know maybe not as polished of a wine. But of a wine in an eighteen dollar range. I mean, I, I, if I was just on the nose, I would, <clears throat> and you didn't tell me how much it was, I would say it's probably somewhere between like twelve and twenty dollars. So a lot of the bramble to it, a lot of uh, dried wood, um, raspberry, uh, even a touch of cranberry to it. Um, very rustic smelling, which I expect from a lot of Malbecs. Um, a touch of cinnamon. It from aerating it and swirling it, it's it's starting to soften that rustic quality. It's starting to not be as harsh. A touch of smoke to it. Yeah. Let's try it out. It's definitely more pleasant on the palate than it is on the nose. I was expecting a real harsh wine. I mean, it's not harsh. It's actually very pleasant, very easy drinking, as easy drinking as it can be. Um, the tannins are a little bit higher up, um, slightly elevated. Um, very juicy wine. Um, so I'm going to say there's a good, good amount of acid to it. Um, decent amount, not, not, not terribly high. The pH is only 3.7. So, um, it's not like screaming high pH acid, whatever, like, like a 3.1 or 3.2 or whatever, like, you know, like a, like a Riesling or a Gewürztraminer or a Gruner Veltliner, more Gruner than Gewürz. Um, but, um, was it 14.5% alcohol? It's very well contained on the alcohol. Like I really don't, I really, I would think it was like, like a full, full percentage point lower. But it's got a bit of that rustic quality, you know, a bit of that dried wood, like, you, like, you, like you're sitting at the picnic table this time, not necessarily walking into the old shop. Um, the red fruits are definitely prominent in this. Um, the raspberry and also a little bit of blackberry, um, <clears throat> a touch of vanilla, um, little cinnamon, a little clove, um, little dried flowers, a little potpourri type of thing, cedar box. It's a pleasant one. This style of Malbec isn't necessarily my style. So, but if I'm evaluating winemaking, like how good is the wine made, it's, it's well made. Um, again, $18, well made, not spectacular, not horrible. In that middle, it's a style of Malbec that a lot of people like. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm going to drink this wine. Eventually, I'm going to like it. I might make this like wine with some friends come over that I might do pull this wine because I know they'll probably like it. Um, not because I'm trying to be cheap, um, but you know, just trying to play to your audience. Um, I like the rustic quality of it. I like that little the touch of smoke on, on the nose. And if you have it with a meal, it's going to be, it's going to be just fine. All right, wine number three. This is also, oh, by the way, it says made with organic grapes. I think in all three. So yeah, I don't think I mentioned the organic that they farm organically. Uh, this is also the 2017 Domaine Bousquet. Res uh, they're, they're all reserves, by the way, uh, and it's Cabernet Sauvignon. So <clears throat> real quick, reserve outside of the old world in general means nothing. Legally means nothing. Uh, I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything to the winemaker or to the winery. This, you know, these might be the, you know, the better grapes. That's why they're reserved. 
but reserve has no legal standing uh, in most places of the new world. Um, in the old world, there tends to be like some some regulations as to whether or not you know as to whether you can call it reserve or not. You know what I'm really happy about? It's not leaking. So I wonder if I just if I don't use it for a while, it does the leaking. So I know I'm not getting a full 15 glasses out of this, but this is like a month and a half. You're seeing this about a month and a half after I recorded all this. So I'm hoping that between now and that point, I've resolved my issue. Oh, let's, let's pull up the fact sheet for this. So let's see. It is 85% cab, 15% Malbec. Um, also, uh, harvest between the third and fourth week of April. Um, it goes through cold maceration, which is a cold soak with the skins for 48 hours. Uh, they have selected yeast with fermenting for 10 days and then 10 additional days of that maceration. 100% mallow as usual and aged in French oak for 10 months. So smoked meat quality. Um, we smell the smoke more than the meat. I do get a hint of like jalapeno. Some uh, cranberry. Some blackberry, raspberry. Cedar box. Uh, this has more of the old wood that you walked into the wood shop. You know, or a shop that has wood floors and all that. Not the wood shop. Um, rather than sitting at the picnic table. Potpourri. Not quite like, it's not quite like walking into a Pier 1. Because Pier 1 is more of that, that polished wood. Along with, you know, unpolished wood or older wood. This is straight up like you walked into an old, like you were like, you know, in a small town and, you know, the shop's been around for like 50 years and the same wood floors for the past 50 years. A touch of, um, I don't know, tar, but like bitter coffee, roasted coffee, that type of stuff. You can feel the alcohol in this one a little bit. It's still 14.5, but you can feel the alcohol a little bit. Um, kind of cinnamony, that's the word. The tannins are elevated for sure. Raspberry, <clears throat> a touch of vanilla to it. Um, so we got that bramble, that old wood, dry wood. Um, cassis. I don't use the word cassis a lot with cab. It, it's there, but I don't always key in on it. But it like hit me on this one. Um, yeah, the tannins really are, not, are, not, are really starting to become more aggressive. Um, it's also a, a black tea, iced tea quality to it. A touch of green tobacco, a touch of the smoked meat. Um, it's a pleasant wine. Not entirely my style of cab. But I wouldn't necessarily turn it down if it was being poured for me. And I'm definitely going to enjoy it. This is definitely a wine that needs food. So it'll help interact and help really help really enhance the flavor of the wine, of course. And the wine will help influence in, uh, the, the food. But this is totally like a burger wine. Um, you know, a barbecue wine. Um, you know, you even drink it with pizza. Um, hot dogs. You know, 
you're not, I mean, or you could just flat out have a steak, but it should be like a, a steak on a grill, not something you put into an oven, but you know, it has like maybe wood um, as, as its fuel, you know, instead of just like gas, not just a gas one, but like, you know, you, you hit the, hit the wood on there um, or charcoal or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it's, I like it. I like, I like it. Um, it's not necessarily my, my preferred style of cab, but you know, we totally drink it. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, click the links above to frame me up, click the links below to, um, find out more information about the wine. Uh, don't forget to use my promo code, uh, 1337 wine with underground seller. Um, and, uh, Hit the donate button if you if you like. It's kind of over here, down, down a little bit. Um, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.